Hey, good morning everyone. Kay here on the homestead. Well, what much of the country right now is thinking about is rain, water, watering their gardens, watering their farms. There's drought marching across the country. And when I first looked at the map, it looked good here in Tennessee. And now we've been in a heat wave with a dry spell, except for that one little shower two days ago which only lasted, you know, a half an hour. That's it for over two weeks. And in this intense heat, 90 degrees plus every single day, it's been brutal on my plants. And many of my bean plants have suffered. There's yellowing. Many of them are just keeling over and I don't know Plants get stressed when they don't get enough rain and moisture, and I don't want to water my plants with city water. I want to use my cistern water, which is rainwater. <laughs> but in my case, my cistern now is down to about four feet. Four feet, four feet. Um, my helper measured yesterday. He cut a hickory branch that was seven feet tall and he put it down in there. I can't film this. It's completely pitch dark in there. But he pulled it out and it was wet up to about four feet. I have to spot water. I've really appreciated a lot of your comments um, and one, uh, one comment was to run a line from the house down to the lower garden. So I bit the bullet, bought another hose 130 feet plus the other 100 foot new hose, but I also need another hose. I need about another 100 feet down there to really get around to do it all because we were trying to work it yesterday and, and the water pressure from up here blew out the cheap hose at the very end. So I went down there and it was like a geyser coming out and I'm going, oh my goodness. So I'm still working on the watering issue here. Uh, one of the ways you can uh, help yourself is to, of course, water early in the morning or late at night. Last night, I not late at night, but l late in the evening, I watered at 8 o'clock. A lot of it had gotten watered in the morning, the more established plants, the tomatoes and cow peas and sweet potatoes and, and cabbages and all that had gotten watered in the morning. But I concentrated on all the new plantings because you know that soil those top two inches just dry out like that now I do have clay soil so you get down three inches and you run into some nice clay so once those roots get down in there it's a lot better but literally the dirt is cracked open everywhere you look it's just cracked open so let's check the rain gauge and see if there's anything in there <coughs> I need water. Okay, so that little shower the other day produced only that much. So, <laughs> that's not enough. Okay, so another thing way I'm helping myself is I'm going to thin plants so that, you know, put my emphasis on a few plants rather than so many. You don't have to thin pea plants. You can pack them close together, but in this case, I'm losing plants. And I'm also losing, even though my corn looked fabulous, two days ago, I have cutworm or something leveling a number of my plants but I haven't seen a cutworm I don't know how to deal with a cutworm other than just use BT and since last year I had armyworm in my corn which destroyed the whole inside you know forming stem I'm going to take a solution of BT down spray and thin out the corn and do what I can to preserve this year's harvest. So, let's go. 
Okay, here we are down at the corn patch. And the only thing that I know that can do this kind of damage is cutworm. I mean, it's still attached to some of the roots, but not all. So, I don't know. This is still completely wet from last night. But look, there's another casualty. Two more. There's just some all the way down. And then I have a bad gap here, just didn't come up. More gaps. So, you know, I'm just going to deal with what I've got. Lost a few there. But you see, I've got so much bug damage. Wow. I mean, this is the brand new stuff and bug damage. <sighs> Yesterday we got in three hyssop plants that I seeded. I started from seed. Here's a row of eggplant. That's my only hope for eggplant this year. I had so much eggplant last year. So much bug damage. But bug damage on the leaves, I mean, I'm hoping that they still produce. There's a nice one there. I did spray these. Yesterday I planted these four Kushaw plants. Actually, there's more than four. There's, those are doubles. There's seven there to get all together. I decided not to separate the roots because cucurbits, especially winter squash, don't like to be moved anyway. They like to be planted in the soil, but it's so late and I've got the crow problem, so, and I'm out of row cover cloth. So, it's just very strange. I don't know why this row looks like it does. But anyway, I planted winter squash in these three rows, different kinds. And then here I had some little watermelon plants that I had started. Got those in. Uh, same here. Actually that first one is a squash of some kind. So got a few, and that's down there is a, some of the okra seed washed down during that big rain and landed up completely on the opposite side of the garden. Okra's looking good. And the first two rows of peas look pretty good, you know. I did thin these out. And here's the new plantings that are covered. Mostly beans and peas, field peas. And this is the cotton under there. Over here I've got, at the top, I've got two rows of peanuts. Tomatoes are looking good. And sweet potatoes behind that. Only got one tomato plant that looks like it's not going to make it. This is ground cherry. I was looking for a better place to put this, but at this point in the season, the space is here, the sun is here. Let's just get it done. It's now or never. It's hard to even put my knee down on the ground because it's so, it feels like asphalt. <laughs> oh, Fortunately, I got a good watering done last night and yesterday, but a lot of the plants, well, it's gonna be a challenge to see if we can make it. I'm gonna run down this row real quick and thin these corn. You can thin corn anywhere from four to six inches to eight inches. Some people even do 10 inches or they do one in each square foot gardening. I've done that before too, back in California. Uh, but at this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an initial thin of four inches because I have so many gaps. 
and I don't want to thin down to my rock bottom number in case I lose more plants from cutworm. I'm hoping since BT works on caterpillars, cutworm is a caterpillar, uh, I'm going to give the ground a little soak too. Now I haven't consulted with anybody on this. This is just what I have available and what I'm going to do this morning to try to ameliorate this problem. First row was on the edge of the protective row cover, so it is possible that the crows were able to slip out some of the seed. Um, I'm going to do, well, <laughs> this is questionable because it's barely standing there right now as it is. And the dirt is probably not as good right on the end. See, we've got a real problem here. I, I, dropped, I dropped a whole handful of corn because I was in a rush. It was really hot. And it actually makes things harder for me. Um, so I'm going to pick out what I think is the strongest looking. Now at this point, a lot of people suggested transplanting. And I would do that. Number one, if they weren't so close together, and number two, if it was earlier, you know, in the season. See, so I've got, this one's the best looking one of all, this one. And so, I'm gonna create some space there. This is the second best looking one but it's only two inches away. But we've got this big gap over here. So, I'm gonna do that. Like I said, this is just an initial. Trimming. Now, if I could grab down, you know, if, if the soil was if it was, if the soil was in a different state right now, I would try to do some transplanting. But it isn't, and it's so late. I'm just going to have to go for. You now, I see everything looks a little compromised. I'd like to get a big load of compost down here and just pack it all the way in, all the way down. I mean, it's it's a tough call. You know, what do you take out? What do you leave? What looks stronger? About four inches there. Okay, how's that look? That's about four inches got too close together here and the roots feel a little loose on that one so that one comes out this one's so small but it's four inches it gives this one a better chance so all right
Okay, the sun came out, and uh, so I'm not going to be able to spray the rest of this. I don't think it's a good idea to spray it. Although, you know what? It's still early. It's probably only, let's see how cold it is. I mean, hot. <laughs> it's 823. And it is, oh gosh, it's only 72. You know what? I'm going to take a chance and just go ahead and spray it so it's done. Huh, there's a bug in there. See it? Yeah, get out. Not welcome here. You see, they go in there and lay the eggs right down. Wait, I missed one. I don't like to pull them out. Wow, that dirt is so dry. Last night. Obviously, I needed mulch down here, but I wasn't able to get wood chips. Not yet, anyway. And I just don't have enough mulch to cover up a huge garden like this. So I did get all of that sprayed, plus the new row of purple hull peas, and the bugs were just escaping. The bugs are everywhere. <laughs> I know bugs gotta eat, okay? But there's a whole forest out there. I did actually attempt to do some transplanting, and so I transplanted probably about 10 or 12, and we'll see if they take. Yeah, I'm gonna water those in, and then I'm gonna call it. I haven't even had my cacao. <laughs> so I am going to head inside, wipe off the sweat, and try to get this out to you so I can operate more in time. As you know, I got very two to three weeks behind getting my videos out. And so now I'm caught up. I actually, except for that. <laughs> I never did that Earthship video in Taos. That's still sitting in my computer. I didn't do that. But everything else is um, pretty caught up. So I'm getting very excited because this entire 5,000 square foot garden is pretty full. And some of these cabbages are going to be coming out. And I'm going to put a whole lot of compost, manure, dirt, something because this 
upper corner. You know, the best dirt is that way, going downhill, and the worst dirt is up in this corner where I planted the cabbages. So I am going to get some heads, I think. They just seem to have arrested. I mean, usually you don't grow cabbage in 90 degree weather anyway. But as you can see, this corner gets a lot of shade. It, it shades, it, the shade lasts until 9.30 and then it's shaded by 4.30 or so from this tree. So I think that's the only way these cabbages have been able to survive this hot weather because I put them in late, late bloomer. Anyway, I really appreciate you watching my channel, liking the videos, and sharing with a friend, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe if this is your thing. <laughs> See you next time.